Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching India Tonight with me, Sumita Kareer. And our top story, well, India is making a big and bold leap into AI. India has plans to develop its own world-class foundational Gen AI model. And that's the word that's coming in from IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav, who announced, or rather who made this big announcement earlier in the day. In fact, the government has secured over 18,000 GPUs under the AI India Compute Facility. And that includes 15,000 high-end GPUs or graphic processing units. These are the brains, advanced brains of any supercomputer. In fact, the plan is also to make the model the most affordable AI compute setup at under $1 per unit. When is it expected? Well, within four to eight months, with proposals having been invited from six major developers. Now, India's AI model will be tailored for India and it will provide for bias mitigation. Minister Vaishnav also revealed plans for indigenous GPU development with discussions currently underway with tech partners. Now, India's AI roadmap also includes an AI safety institution and large-scale compute infrastructure and that could position the country as a serious player in the global AI race. So, with that big announcement coming in, the big question really is where is India positioned in the global AI race? Because, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen developments come in from the United States where several companies are developing AI models, then from China as well uh, with respect to deep sea. So let's take a look at what the minister had to say earlier in the day while he made that announcement. The innovations which are happening in AI world are humongous, really amazing innovations that are happening. And our country, India, definitely will play a major role in it. Definitely we will, because we have very strong software capabilities, we have very strong innovative uh, ecosystem, innovation ecosystem. So we will play, our country will definitely play a major role in it. Yes, AI models will and the entire ecosystem will become uh, very distributed, that's for sure. What will be important in the way forward is how we use AI. What's the best applications that we can create? Well, the last couple of days has all been about how DeepSeek will be a game changer as far as artificial intelligence and open AI's prowess is concerned. It seems like uh, India is also ready to display its might in the world of AI. In fact, uh, Minister Ashwini Vaishnav has today announced uh, a slew of uh, announcements as far as uh, India's AI mission is concerned. Now he says there's a common compute facility uh, has been impaneled and has been worked upon in the last couple of months. Uh, this will play a key role in creating an AI ecosystem in the country. About 18,693 GPUs have been in, impaneled so far is what the minister said, of which 10,000 GPUs of the 18,693 are available to be used starting today and can be used by those uh, working in this space uh, in tandem as well. He has called for proposals to be developed on our own foundational model uh, is something that the ministry is appealing, of which about 18 applications have been selected in the first round and they will be funded to develop models. Now these models will focus on areas such as healthcare, agriculture, disaster management, learning disability, so on and so forth and a couple of other areas as well. And within the next 12 days there will be a slew of announcement as far as India's AI mission is concerned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, where is India now positioned in the global AI race? Let's take that question forward uh, to our guest who's joining us live, Jibu Elias, uh, AI activist, research and content lead at India AI. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Elias, for joining us here on uh, India tonight. Let's first get your thoughts on uh, the announcements that came in from the minister today. The union minister stated that India's uh, own AI model will be there in the next six to eight months and that uh, this model will be distribution focused or app focused. How do you look at those announcements that have come in on the model's focus and the timeline that the government is looking at? Um, yeah, uh, thank you, Sumita, for having me here. Just a clarification, I, I, I'm with Mozilla Foundation uh, as of now. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, this is a timely announcement. And if you look at a larger perspective, India has been making significant stride in the space of AI, especially in the space of AI regulation and policy with our chair uh, chairmanship of uh, GPAI. 
and many uh, many other uh, strategic uh, organizations now coming to this announcement i think um, we've been uh, we've been very uh, we've been third in terms of ai research papers published you know AI, uh, in, in presentations in ai conference however the gap between uh, us and china which are leading one and two has been significant now this announcement this ability to bridge what we call a compute gap which is very critical when it comes to ai the access to uh, high performing uh, computer resources and gpus is very critical and this announcement is a major step towards addressing that challenge which we have been facing for a long time so that's a, an important aspect secondly how we can open a new avenue for many of our researchers, many of our entrepreneurs, uh, startup founders, and students to look and think about unique solutions in solving uh, the, the issues we have in agriculture, healthcare, or education, which I think the minister, Honorable Minister himself have pointed out, is going to be very critical. And finally, third, I think India's model, India's strategy is not to compete directly with what US and China has been doing. We had our AI strategy called AI for All, where we look at uh, ensuring that the the we, we want to use AI in a responsible way to address our socioeconomic challenge and empower our people. So I think this is a uh, important step in the right direction. But uh, unfortunately, we have to take more steps in this 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 route as well. Yes, we'll come to uh, those points in just a bit on what more India needs to do so far as its uh, AI mission is concerned and how can it really build capabilities in this space. And you rightly mentioned that uh, GPUs is going to be key to powering this revolution. Of course, the minister stated that we have high-end GPUs, 15,000 in the entire process, and have more GPUs than were used in deep seek. Now, Mr. Elias, India has for long held a fort, uh, but when it comes to software capabilities, we do know that the government did announce its AI mission last year with uh, with allocation of over 10,000 crores and of course when there are comparisons done with China which is not really needed but surely there is a fair question to ask on what has taken India that long to come up with its own AI model we've seen developments happen not just in China but in the United States as well as early as 2023 so uh, if you look at uh, China alone China came up with a strategy in 2016 where they want to be leading the world of ai or agi which is artificial general intelligence which is what we are all uh, you know all the developers are trying to achieve an ai system that is capable of doing all the tasks a human can do so china has set itself a target for 2030 to achieve agi and this target was set in 2016 they see ai as a part of their asymmetric uh, strategy for warfare where they know a direct conflict or economic weather or or uh, political or in military with countries like U.S. won't help them. So which are the areas where they can have this uh, asymmetric advantage? And they, one of the areas they have identified is AI. And they have been systematically upping their research, uh, getting their fundamental rights from the school level, from the municipal level, deploying AI tools in the last uh, uh, five, six years. And they have been making their... Uh, uh, how do I say the rise very clear? It, it's only now that may, the public is realizing that China came up with this uh, amazing uh, deep seek and people are looking at it. Secondly, there is a lot of geopolitical uh, uh, aspect also related to deep seek and Alibaba coming up with Quen 2.5 the other day. It, it almost seems like a, a reply to the Trump's inauguration from China. Uh, and his uh, tech buddies uh, in general. Now, right. coming to India, we have, we have a long way to go. Uh, and uh, the India AI mission is a good starting point. We need hmm. to look at a large-scale skilling of our youth. Because if you look, uh, there's a significant shortage in uh, highly hmm. advanced AI and machine learning engineers in, in our country. And in fact, our right. uh, software industry itself is not right. that capable of building these kind of models. So, it's a, it's a okay, fundamentally very valid question. points that you mentioned, and we do hope that uh, this is right. Right. Let Let me ask you that question on geopolitics, uh, Mr. Elias, because you've touched upon a very, very important point. And uh, the development of AI is not just limited to technological uh, innovation and development, but it has to be looked at from a geopolitical lens as well. Pretty much like how the chips race is panning out, and which is why the reason there, the, the, I mean, the Biden administration is controlling the export of advanced AI algos, and even President Donald Trump announced Project Stargate. So clearly, the United States and China are looking at this from a warfare point of view. Is this not India's strategy? Is India looking at the development of AI from a different lens? And does it need to modify its strategy then? Because uh, we're seeing other countries do that. 
So I want to recall uh, something our honorable, honorable Prime Minister uh, said in 2020, and he has repeated many times. India wants to be the garage for AI tools for global south. The, the the reason why India stands special is we have the capabilities to uh, you know be in be in in it the same league with the top and entry guys at the same time we are in touch with the global south as a leader of global south so what india has been said to achieve is if we can solve some of our social economic problem like issues in farming issues in education uh you know healthcare uh we can address all those things you know how we can solve access in healthcare all those things with technology like ai which some of the states and some of the ministries are doing then those tools can be translated very easily across the global south whether it's in africa or whether it's in south america or 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 of the Asia, so that's where India's strength lies. We our strength is li lies in look at what we have done with this straw, right? Building these tools, which can then translate into overall global south. Now the deep seeks uh, thing has a lot of uh, geopolitical thing uh, strategy as well. Look at how it has impacted the overall. Uh, share values of NVIDIA and other AI companies in US, right? It has asked this question, do you need, uh, you know, hundreds and uh, hundreds of millions or, uh, or or billions to make and train AI models, even though there are a lot of questions about the 6 million that's being claimed right. as the cost of deep sea. So that raises a lot of questions, but that also gives us hope, you know, if they can do it in five, six billion or, million or more than that, then what stops us from building our own? Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, which is what the government is now doing, building its own India-made AI. And uh, one final question, Mr. Elias, before we let you go. You touched upon briefly on research, and that, I think, is very critical to developing, you know, uh, this entire ecosystem in the country, whether it is around AI, deep tech, or even the semiconductor ecosystem. Uh, do throw some light on that and, uh, uh, and on investments and on research, because Nikhil Kamath of Zerodha also tweeted, and I quote, that while India does produce great, great researchers, we do not seem to offer a conducive environment for them. So, so the importance of research has to be kept in mind and that kind of allocation needs to come about. I completely agree with uh, Mr. Kamath and what you mentioned, Sumida, here. Uh, if you look, we, we, since we are talking about the China, if you look at the top 100 universities, Chinese universities are there in top 20. Uh, many of the Chinese universities are in top 100. But the the in university ranking, an Indian university that have comes in the is in top 200 is uh, around 200 is IIT Bombay. So our research ecosystem has been lagging behind for years and years. We don't have any solid industry academia partnerships, even though there has been some efforts to achieve something in that capacity. And and, and finally, uh, our our research ecosystem, the academic ecosystem, doesn't have the resource, the compute resource, and others others as well. I think few few months back, I wrote an uh, op-ed on uh, uh, op-ed saying that there is a big gap between the top a uh, you know a uh, top academic institute whether the iits and the, some of the private universities and what lies beyond that if you go to tier 2 and tier 3 towns and if you look at the research institutes the 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 quality of education itself computer science education itself is so pathetic i have to unfortunately say this it, this has even even led uh, industry bodies like nascom to come and say a big chunk of india's computer graduates uh, coming out every year is unemployable so this raises a big question. How are we going to take take up a country like China or US with, with this lack of uh, skilled uh, talent? That's one big question. Secondly, there are numerous numbers that saying that a big number of IIT graduates, you know, the toppers, I think the top 60%, 60% or plus of the toppers in IITs are leaving the country. So if we can provide them as the Honorable Minister pointed out, the computing facilities, access to the GPUs, the data infra infrastructure, and overall funding ecosystem for them to realize their aspiration in research, that will be a game changer. And that's what we ought to do. You know, very, very valid points that you've made, Mr. Relais. Uh, ultimately, it's all about not just the kind of investments that will be employed in the ecosystem, that will be funneled into the ecosystem, but it has to be primarily about research and skilling. We do hope that the government is listening and there will be some consequential announcements in the upcoming budget. On that note, thank you very much once again for taking the time out and joining us here on ET Now. Thank you, Sumita. Glad to be here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, time now for us to slip into a quick break, but lots more coming up on the other side. You don't go anywhere.